What's going on guys? Welcome back. It's certainly been a hot minute since my last video, but um, long story short, life happens and sometimes I just, uh, sometimes we gotta take a break, but we're back and I had put up a poll on my channel. You guys voted. I put the teams in a randomizer to make it interesting and you chose the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, so obviously we're going to be starting in the 2023-24 season uh, since this season's over but uh, funny enough the Tampa Bay Lightning actually won uh, the 2023 Stanley Cup in this simulation uh, as you can see here I mean this simulation was kind of uh, chaotic but Dallas they're actually making the Stanley Cup final so maybe that won't bode well for Vegas here um, but yeah pretty much I just wanted to get up to caught up to speed head into the 2023 draft um, kind of see who's gonna land Connor Bedard in this simulation but I am really excited to get going here um, and I am gonna be editing the videos down a bit I know I said I would try to uh, keep the editing to a minimum just to be able to get more videos out uh, this first one obviously gonna be a bit longer as we'll go through this offseason and the entirety of the 23-24 season. Uh, but as always, if you enjoy the video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. The support helps me out a ton. I appreciate every single one of you for being here. I hope you enjoy and let's sim out to the draft and see who wins Connor Bedard in the uh, goal plays universe here. Oh my God, guys, I can't even make this up. So <laughs> Chicago was the worst team in the league in the simulation and they stay at number one so just like real life the uh, Chicago Blackhawks are gonna be winning the Bedard sweepstakes this season which kind of sucks but uh what can you do about it there uh St. Louis Detroit Seattle Montreal rounding out the top five Seattle had a terrible season this year which was kind of interesting but there you have it Chicago uh mimicking real life in the goal plays cinematic universe um yeah, you hate to see it. All right, so here we are in the draft. Um, as you can see, we are picking number 24. Um, I don't really think I want to try and trade up much, uh, try and keep it realistic here as possible. But we'll just go through the top five. There you go, Connor Bedard to the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, Fantilli there going to the Blues. Uh, Detroit takes Michkov there. Seattle takes Carlson there, 77 high elite, and the Canadians take Zach Benson. So nice top five, and we'll go out and sim to our pick. All right, so as you can see here, we didn't do much scouting. Um, we do have Oliver Bonk here, two years ETA on a defense, but I think I'm going to select uh, Ethan Gauthier here. Uh, real life player, obviously pretty good, good stats. Uh, probably two years, three years ETA. We want to try and build this team up for the future. Um, you know, not much options. You have Caden Price here is also pretty good. Quentin Musty there, you know, obviously we know he's not a bottom six. Uh, but I'm going to select Gautier here uh, with our first pick. And he's 66, medium top six. Not bad, but got some good numbers. Good shot, good puck skills. And, uh, you know, pretty solid here at 24th overall. So next we're going to select Andre Lashko. Got a pretty good uh, three years ETA, but low elite, um, you know, looks pretty decent. And he's actually a low top six um, in round three, put up some good numbers, interesting stats, pretty good skater and good shot. Uh, not bad in the third round. All right, next we're going to select Malachi Lombardi. 50-50 um, low elite, three years ETA. Kind of the highest rank the medium elite guy up there kwong is definitely not going to be that just he's got like a five years eta uh this guy's got three years so we'll see what he ends up being and he's a low top six so not the best uh, especially in round three pretty good skater though um but yeah we'll move along here to 152. all right guys i'm gonna go out on a limb here and select tim metzger uh, he's, he says low AHL starter, but he's got like 75% chance at a two years ETA and a 50-50 chance at an X factor. I feel like, you know, this just looks like a really weird pick, especially because he didn't play. Uh, but at 152nd overall, you know, what do you really have to lose? And he's a low fringe starter. Okay, so 
not the best. He actually does have a superstar ability there. Um, 65 poise, not terrible coming out of the draft. Um, but 64 overall in round five for a goalie, not terrible. So it would be interesting to see how he develops and go to our next pick here. Uh, 184th overall in the sixth round. Uh, I really just want to sort it by potential here. Um, not much here. I feel like 282 is going to be kind of low. Uh, medium top six. Uh, we could just go for this low elite guy. 50-50. And low top six. You know, not terrible. 57 overall in round six. Uh, and that'll do it for our picks in this draft here. So, you know, only five picks, not much. But I do like our first pick in Gautier. I uh, feel like he might develop nicely. And we'll go to the resign phase here. We got some decisions to make with contracts. All right, Toronto fans, I have a feeling you're going to be happy with this. Um, or maybe you won't. I don't know. But we are going to let go of Kerfoot and Hall here. Um, just not worth it. For 81 overall, asking 1.8 is cheap. But we can definitely do better, um, especially trying to round out our bottom six. So three, two, one. <laughs> Happy New Year, Toronto fans. We are letting go of these guys, which I know a lot of Toronto fans wanted that to happen at some point via trade um, and hoping that Toronto just kind of lets go of them this year. Um, you know, definitely not worth it. I feel like a char here, two million bucks for a 31 overall uh, or 81 overall, 31 years old. We're going to let go of him too. Not sure what we want to do about bunting just yet. Um, I mean, not terrible. Probably going to have to let him go as well. Um, O'Reilly here, just want to show you, asking for $8 million bucks. So, uh, you know, at 32 years old, I feel like we could probably let him go as well. Go to free agency and see if we can re-sign him. Uh, even Engvall here in an 85 overall. Uh, I feel like we're just going to kind of hit a hard reset in the free agency here and let him go as well. Um... So, kind of cleaning house here this summer with the Leafs. Alright guys, so basically what I decided to do is just let go of everyone. I mean, as you can see here, just some RFAs, guys, you know, who are going to play in the AHL team that we're renewing. Um, not much. We did qualify uh, Samsonov. Uh, as you can see, he's asking for $5 million for one year. Um, so, we sort of want to see what happens with that. I'm probably going to trade away Murray this summer as well just get rid of that cap space and maybe even have wall um you know backing him up uh actually i think you know let's do that he uh let's see if he'll go for like 4.8 for one uh and then we'll trade murray but pretty much just cleaned house uh with the leafs this summer and just gonna uh see what we can do mess around with that 14.2 million in cap space that we have in the uh, off season with free agency all right, so some contracts. Holmberg renews, Simmons renews. Uh, Samson over there. Got one year at five million, not bad. So at least we have a starter next year. Uh, Coggern renews. Um, Darago Chinstev renews. I probably butchered that. Crawl renews. Arbruze and Matthew Nyes. We got him on the ELC, so he'll play with us next season. Amarov, ELC, and that's that. All right, here trying to make a trade of Buffalo, Matt Murray for a fifth round pick. Just trying to get rid of that 4.6 awful year on the contract. Uh, and there we go. Easy trade. Frees up some extra cap space for us in the free agency. All right, guys. So nice setting here. We bring in JT Comfer. Um, we have him on a two-year, 1.8 million uh, deal there. Uh, Dadanov also accepts. We got him on a one-year, 1.25 million. Nice bottom six forward for us. Uh, Aiden Hill there, also nice. Um, we actually gave him three years, uh, just 1.4 million, I believe. Um, so we have a really solid backup goalie now for uh, the next few years, actually. And wow, guys, let's go. Uh, Patty came as a free agent, only wanted a one-year deal. Uh, so we gave him exactly what he asked. One year, 7.3 million. Uh, bring him in for a season. Uh, 34 years old, so he's getting up in there in age, but certainly still great. Um, so I uh, really like that signing for the next year. And guys, our last signing here, Jason Zucker. We just gave him one year, 4.3 million. Um, we had a little over 5 million left, and we still needed to fill a spot. So he will be, you know, a nice, probably third liner for us. 
All right, guys, here we go. Officially starting our seasons where we are trying to win a Stanley Cup with the Toronto Maple Leafs headed into the 23-24 season, our first official season. Take a look at our lines here. Uh, top six is pretty pretty nice, honestly. Uh, bottom six, too, even isn't bad. You know, having an 84 wall on your fourth line is pretty good. Uh, moved it like for chemistry straight sakes. It just kind of evens out a little bit, um, balances out. Uh, Simmons there. Um, hate that we have him, but uh, I'm not quite ready to put Matthew Nyes in there. He's still 75 overall, as you'll see. Um, so we got Simmons, and again, for chemistry stake, I do not want a minus two on that fourth line. Uh, overall, looks pretty decent. As for defense, looking pretty good here. Sandine Riley first pairing, Lodrigan Brody, and then Giordano McCabe. A uh, really nice shutdown third pairing uh, defense there. Take a look at our goalies here. Samson over starter. Aiden Hill backing him up on such a great contract for Hill. Uh, take a look at our power play first unit there. Pretty nasty second unit. Uh, also pretty good. Uh, look at our penalty kill. First unit there is nice. Second unit also pretty good. Um, our three man line one gets a plus two, which is awesome. And then, you know, the rest minus two and minus three. But how often are they really going to be out there? So overall, I like the look of this team headed into the new season. And obviously take a look at our contracts. This is the big year uh, where we're going to have to extend Matthews and Nylander uh, or, you know, we'd like to. Um, so obviously we're going to take a look at this and see what we want to do with it. All right, guys. So interesting enough, Austin Matthews is only asking for one year at 10.8 million. Uh, if we try to sign him for the max eight years, he goes up to almost $16 million. Um, the thing is, if you bump him up to two years, only asking for 11.2 and then jumps um, to just over 12. I'm actually thinking we do the three years at maybe, you know, see if we'll take 11. Uh, I don't know. I want to like piss him off. <laughs> like coming in super low. Uh, maybe 11, 7, 5. Uh, see if we'll do three years on that. All right, guys. So we need Nick Robertson on a four year contract at just 1.5 million. Uh, is developing nicely for us. I like that deal. Uh, Nylander, here we go. A big boy contract. We give him a six-year deal at $9 million per year. Um, I do like that deal. Was asking for uh, about $10 million, so got him a little bit under for six years. Locked and loaded. We also renewed Sandine on a two-year bridge deal at $4.2 million. Uh, keep him in RFA for that time. Really good defense minis now in an 85 overall. And there we go, Austin Matthews renews with us. Three years at 11.75 million. Uh, really like that contract. Not all that much more than what he's making right now. Lock him in for another three years. So now that we work some magic with our uh, contracts here, uh, we do have Mitch Marner's contract to think about um, and John Tavares. So we'll see what happens with that, guys. But really happy we got Matthews and Nylander both locked in um, for you know another little while with us all right guys so headed into 2024 start of the new year we we're playing very well this season 23 9 and 2 good for second in the Atlantic and third overall in the Eastern Conference they're just one point out of the Rangers um, but so far you know looking pretty good uh, Atlantic division here is Playing pretty well overall. Mitch Marner there uh, popping off a little bit. 49 points in 34 games. Um, overall, everything's looking good. Um, everyone's playing well. I like how we look headed towards the trade deadline. Um, so, you know, we'll see what we want to do and sim out to them. All right, guys. So headed into the trade deadline. We just started like absolutely blowing. I don't know what happened to us, but we are now 69 points. I mean, not really nice <laughs> for headed toward, you know, the last little stretch of the season here. Um, I'm hoping that we can pick it up here. Um, really fighting for those wild card spots at this point. Um, not really sure uh, what we want to do at the trade deadline here, but we'll assess our options and see if we want to make any moves. All right, guys, I'm trying to work out a deal with the Boston to try and get their first round pick out of them. Um, offering up TJ Brody Lafferty, a fourth, fifth, and a seventh this year as well for their first round. And uh, Riley coming back just for this to make the salary cap work on both ends uh, for them. Uh, see what they say to this. Trade rejected. Okay. 
This is offer is woefully, woefully insufficient. Uh, could live with what they're sending us. So maybe we just have to add a higher draft pick or something. But uh, I think we could get them to work out a deal on this. All right. So unfortunately, we couldn't um, work anything out with Boston on a trade. So we didn't end up making any moves. Um, I don't think we necessarily needed to. I think we can make the playoffs. Um, just having some unfortunate sim luck in the last month or so. We'll take a look at the trades here. Lysel, they're going to Chicago. Uh, wow, Bobrovsky, they're going to San Jose. Uh, Connor Murphy to Detroit. Jacob Truba there to Chicago. Um, Ekholm there moving over to the Devils. Um, let's see. Okay, that's about it. Goodrow, they're going to San Jose. So, um, you know, Truba trade, uh, Bobrovsky trade, pretty big. Otherwise, pretty quiet deadline. All right, guys, check this out. So we actually clinched the Atlantic Division uh, with 103 points. Marner there, oh my gosh, popped off. Um, we started winning when it mattered most. Uh, we went on a crazy win streak in March here. I think it was, let's see, 4, 8, 11 game win streak there in March after that ugly loss to Blue Jackets. So that certainly helped us. And then obviously headed down the stretch here, uh, four straight wins. Uh, last game here against the Capitals, and let's see, and a 6-2 win. All right, so finish the season with four straight wins um, to secure the top spot uh, in the Atlantic. 105 points. Hurricanes there, 113. That wins the President's Trophy. And uh, again, Mitch Marner absolutely popped off. What a season for us. Really picked it up. 51-28-3. Marner here leading the team, 109 points. Uh, we actually moved him to the top line with Matthews there, uh, and they popped off Matthews scoring 60 goals. Uh, Tavares Kane putting up 75 points. Riley there, 73 points as a defenseman. Absolutely crazy. Yarn Croak there, 53. Um, I mean, everyone really playing well. Robertson there uh, on the third line, putting up 30 points in his first season with us. Uh, pretty nice to see, and uh, yeah everyone just contributing uh take a look at our goalie stats uh not bad i mean you know you would like to see him a bit better but over 900 on the save percentage under three on the goals against hill there good backup for us as well so uh you know we really like to see that uh from our players and ahl wise you know i don't really care too much about the ahl team to be honest uh, matthew nice they're putting up 34 points i like to see more from him especially because he's playing on the uh first line there uh, but hopefully he goes up in rating. And um, let's check the entire league here. See who popped off. So Marner there actually leading the league uh, with 109 points. Absolutely crazy. Uh, Nylander there also making it in top three. Uh, only three players with 100 plus points. Ovechkin there also getting 60 goals. Tied with Matthews. McCarr 98 points. Oh my goodness. Dude is just absolutely insane. Uh, so Ovechkin and Matthews there. Tied for the Marisa Shard, both scoring 60 goals. Uh, Pasternak in third with 52. Um, so let's check out all the defensemen as well. Makar leading the way. Carlson, though, 90 points, but there's a minus three. So looks like Makar should win the uh, Norris Trophy. Dowdy there put 74 points, plus 24. Pretty impressive there. As for goalies, uh, Mark Drum leading the way. 42 wins. Wouldn't the Flames have loved that this season? <laughs> Um, best save percentage also Markstrom 0.926 and best goals against for a starter also Markstrom so he just had an insane year I uh, wish he could have done that this past season for the Flames but who knows this is 23-24 so maybe he'll have a bounce back year for the Flames um, Aiden Hill also just say 2.71 but as a backup but still uh, like to see that so we'll sim into the playoffs here and see who we get in the first round all right, so no surprise here. We have the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round of the playoffs. Um, I feel like we also played them last year at some point. So it's just destined for these two to be in the first round together. Take a look at the rest of the playoff matchups in the Western Conference there. Flames, Oilers, Ducks, Kings. Nice so Southern California matchup. Uh, Wild Jets and then the Canucks and Avalanche in the East. We have... Um, Panthers, Sabres, Caps, Penguins, Classic Matchup, and Hurricanes, and Blue Jackets of all teams. So, you know, let's get into the sim here and see how we do. First two games, 3-1 loss, 
And a 4-3 win. Okay, tied. 1-1. One, one. Going out to Tampa. 4-1 uh, loss. <laughs> Another 4-1 loss. <laughs> Down 3-1. Oh, man. You hate to see it. Um, let's go period by period here. Could this be our season? 1-1 one, one after 1. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so... Uh, maybe the first round curse is back with us in this simulation. We're out in the first round of Tampa in five games. Uh, that really sucks. Uh, Matthews at least showed up <laughs> six points in the five games. So, you know, that's at least good to see. Uh, certainly our goaltending wasn't that great. Um, so disappointing end to a really great uh, season, I thought. Put together a good run, but... Uh, we got the big contract shored up that we needed to um, head into the draft. Not much else to say. All right, so here's the draft lottery results. Ottawa jumping from 11 to 1. They win the draft lottery. Screw over San Jose uh, and St. Louis there and Chicago. Thank God. Uh, but there's the rest um, of the picks. And Ottawa getting super lucky here take a look at the retired players obviously um pretty early into the sim here so no huge names james neal felino and jack johnson there uh, any goalies just mike smith bishop and Staylock. and take a look at the uh playoff bracket no surprise here honestly calgary winning the stanley cup in 2024 and the lightning actually went all the way to stanley cup finals again so now in this sim that is five straight stanley cup appearances if you include the last three that we've had in real life uh, absolutely insane uh, tampa definitely uh, should be considered a dynasty at this point no question about it um, but calgary walking away with the 2024 stanley cup beating uh, tampa in five games and here we are in the draft class guys uh this generated koskinen um going to be a franchise potential player NHL ready oh my goodness to similar style to Mario Lemieux over Celebrini I don't know why we didn't end up scouting him but that's weird anyway um that's just pretty funny to see and look at this guy Koskin an 84 overall look at those x factors uh wow this dude is uh kind of nasty uh let's just send through the top five picks before we go to ours 80 overall high elite Celebrini um, Blues get Kim Harju 77 overall. Blackhawks get Iserman at 79. And the Islanders will get Zetterberg 76. So let's go to ours. We are picking 27th. All right, guys, we're going to select Felix Lesser. Selecting him over Vinny and Adekalio here. 50 50 low elite. Um, stats look pretty good, though. Uh, I feel like he could turn out to be something nice. Maybe a hidden gem. And he is 72 overall low elite a uh, bunch of x factors on him wow so a uh, really great pick at 27th overall we love to see it and now guys trying to move up to 34th overall with the blackhawks there's some guy that i really want to take uh looks to be like a little hidden gem let's see what they say trade rejected okay so we just got to sweeten the deal with draft picks a little bit here all right guys we we're able to move up to the blackhawks pick uh hoping no one took him let's see um you guys will probably see who i'm talking about here uh there's martindale and poirier here both uh poirier is listed a gem so i think i'm going to take him martindale though uh three years lots of x factor potential but poirier here two years pretty good um and let's see what he is oh my gosh low elite 72 overall in the second round look at all those x factors uh wow what a pick uh, we love to see it. All right, guys, and I actually traded uh, one of our lower ranked prospects um, and, you know, a seventh round pick uh, to trade back to Anaheim um, because I also want to select the other guy we have pinned here, Martindale. I uh, feel like there's also Olsen here. Olsen here, a high elite potential goalie, three years ETA. Uh, I don't know, though. I feel like we could be good on goalies here. This guy just looks so good. Back-to-back um, -back picks. 65 low lead, so slightly lower rated. But, uh, yeah, look at all those X-Factors. Uh, wheels, yeah, fast skater, good shot. I like that pick. Uh, worth it to me. 
in here, guys, we're going to select Omar Blaine. Stats like pretty, it's just pretty weird. Two years at 123rd overall. What is this player? Oh my gosh. Low elite in round four, 69. Extra nice in the fourth round. Um, I don't know why we're getting so lucky with picks here, but that's insane. Go to our next pick. I think as we selected Paris Hogan, uh, medium fringe starter, but put up pretty decent numbers. I mean, you just never know with goalies sometimes in this game. Sometimes they can develop into something. So uh, figured might as well round five. Not much to lose here. Go to pick 187 here. Um, and we're just going to kind of fly through. I want to sort. Um, you know, these guys probably not going to be much. Um, this guy's got 50-50 low lead. Also 50-50 low lead. Uh, five years. This guy's got three years. Um, so we'll take him. Um, he's a low fringe starter. 63 overall though, so a little higher rated for a goalie. Uh, not a bad pick, and I believe that'll be it for the draft. So uh, honestly, I think that was a really good draft. Like our first three picks were uh, really, really great. I, I'm i just very happy with that draft for us. All right, we brought back Patty Kane for an extra year. He played really well for us, uh, and he did take a pay cut this year since he is getting up there in age. Uh, and dropped a little bit in overall, so uh, saved a few million bucks actually on his contract. One year, 5.2 million. Um, good to bring him back. Uh, Samson have also renewed just one year at uh, 3.7 million, uh, so also take a pay cut, free up some extra space for us. Uh, Lil Jagrin renewed again another uh, one year deal, like 3.5 million or something like that. Um, we just want to kind of see how these guys develop. Uh, before committing because there might be some nice free agencies that we can go after uh clifford ahl uh crawl uh lazowski there so yep taking care of the contracts that we wanted to do all right so some signings here we signed back into a one-year contract to help fill out the bottom six uh matt roy good signing there um get him for two years fill out the back end on our defense and lebank also accepts again filling out our bottom six a little bit good signing there all right so here we are ready to go into the 2024-25 season uh first season wasn't terrible but you know we got that first round choke uh choke act going on so uh hopefully we can get back in there in season two with the toronto maple leafs take a look at our lines for next season uh we have nylander matthews marner stacked Top six, honestly, Robertson on the second line there. Now it's Averis and Keane. Uh, bottom six, really solid. We have Amarov and Matthew Nice playing up with us uh, on that fourth line this season. So hopefully uh, we'll see some nice growth from them. But overall, this team is really deep. Um, I like how we have built them for this season. LeBanc and Backland, I think, might help with the defense a little bit, shutting down you know those bottom six uh, lines for other teams. Uh, defense also looks pretty solid. Riley, Sandim, uh, getting a plus one. Lodjagrin and Roy on the second pairing get a plus two, which is nice. And then McCabe and Timmons rounding it out on the bottom pair. Nice shutdown pair there. Uh, as for goalies, rolling with the same Samsonov and Hill backing him up. Uh, take a look at our power plays. Power plays look pretty good. Power play one, plus five, plus one on the second unit. Uh, Foreman PK gets a plus three. And then even correlation. Uh, PK looks pretty solid. Uh, plus two on the first unit, plus two on the second unit there. Uh, even on the last unit, that doesn't play much. Um, three man PK, I like that. I, I like that back when McCabe and Roy. Um, then a minus one and a minus two. Uh, so not terrible. Um, things looking good. But overall, I really like the way this team looks this season. Uh, I think we added some really nice depth. Uh, especially with Backlund down there on the fourth line. A nice veteran presence for those young guys. Um, and hopefully we can make a much better run at it and get out of the first round uh, this season. Although it would be pretty funny if, you know, during this franchise series we get that first round curse. Uh, it would be absolutely tragic. The one thing I do want to address right before we end this season is Mr. Mitch Marner and John Tavares need contract extensions. Let's take a look at what he's asking. Six years, 11.8. He actually was down for seven years? Oh. Okay. 
he does want an extension so let's see can we get him maybe 10.4 for seven on mitch marner let's see that would actually go down from what he's making right now uh john Tavares, that awful 11 million dollar contract what's he asking three years 9.8 oof that is tough we could do just one year at 9.5 could probably get him less maybe maybe one year 9 million extend him i mean he's still an 89 still good i could see that working out for us um yeah let's send it in one year 9 million let's see what he says to that uh keep him together so he takes a pay cut and we'll put that into uh, Marner's contract. But uh, if we can get these guys locked up and with a lot of nice rookies coming, then I think uh, I think that's some good management. Um, so let's just advance before we end the episode here. And there we go. Mitch Marner locks in for seven years at 10. What did we do? 10.4. Oh, my goodness. What a deal. And then we're still waiting to hear back from Mr. Captain John Tavares. There we go. One year, nine million. John Tavares. So uh, take a look at this contract. Management, guys. Absolutely crazy. Matthews, Marner, Nylander locked up. Matthews got two years after this one. But Marner and Nylander locked up. Um, wow. I didn't expect uh, Marner to honestly kind of cheap for where he's at right now um, but i like those deals a lot and that will do it here for this episode guys uh it's a fun one i'm glad to be back and hopefully we'll have some more success in the second season i like how this team looks and as always if you enjoyed the video drop a like and subscribe to the channel i, I appreciate every single one of you for being here watching the videos and getting involved so until season two have a good one, y'all.